Well, hello friends, neighbors, John Newest Neighbor here. Welcome down the nook. Welcome to Saturday and it's freezing and snowing outside when it's like March 23rd or something like that and I'm on spring break. So a little grumpy, I'm gonna go off the Irish uh, month. I think we did a really good job leading up to St. Patrick's Day. And uh, with the snow, I'm coming back to Pete. And specifically, I wanna talk about this. Rest and be thankful. What a great name for a, a, an independent bottler. And they've classified this whiskey as Finglassy, but it's from a new uh, Inch Darney Lowland Distillery. It's young. This is like a five-year-old Scotch, single malt, uh, and it's finished in Isla Cast, which is why I've got something from Isla over here. Uh, but I'm gonna get into this. This bottle, I I went in and uh, co-bought with a, with a friend of the channel. Thank you, Andy, you've been great. Uh, and you know, let's see, what is this like? And will this dram help me rest and be thankful on this snowy spring break? Catch you after the break. Three, four. Well, thanks for staying with me through that cutaway. Uh, as I tried to say, you know, I went in on this bottle of the French. It's a nice way to get whiskey. Uh, and it was a good value. I don't remember the exact price right now. Ah, I wish I could. But, you know, it's uh, it's a good value. But is it good single malt scotch? So you can see here, uh, they're calling it uh, Finglassi 2017 single malt. It's released as single malt should be. It's non-color. Uh, non-chill filter, 46%. Uh, it tells us that it was resting in Oloroso for that five years and then finished in an ex uh, Isle cask. So it had some uh, scotch. We don't know who, we don't know which distillery uh, let them finish it off in their casks, but uh, it definitely is gonna have some peated character. So, you know, and then I'll shoot it against, I didn't have, a, it, it screams to be shot against the Ar the, the Wee Beastie Ardbeg. I don't have a bottle on hand, I don't even have a sample, and I, I I got a lot of scotch around here. I just couldn't bring myself to buy a bottle just for that comparison. So I'll shoot it against the classic Lefroy quarter cask later. But this is this rest and be thankful. Let's get in on the nose. Ah, it's kind of smoky, it's sweet, light, a little bit of citrus. You know, I dig into it and I'm getting some some nice Isla flavors. Like it's got a little bit of that peat and moss, little, slight medicinal going on. There is a fruitiness that must be coming from the Oloroso. I mean, it rested five years in ex Oloroso cast, so that's gotta be coming through. I'm surprised at the very light straw color uh, given um, that it spent so much time in Oloroso share. I really would have expected a just a little bit of a red hue going on, just a little bit in there, uh, but I'm glad I can look at it, consider it's natural color. It's not It's not an amazingly great nose, it's just got a little bit of that peat and light and sweet and a bit of lemon and malt, which I, I often get, but it's a lowland scotch. Now, that's all the nose is going to give me. I bet I'll get more of the nose after a sip. So, Slancha, hope you can rest and be thankful. This is that, they're calling it what, Finglassi 2017. Okay, thankfully the palette released a few more flavors for me. Now I do have just a light berry note to mix in with, with malt, um, malt sugars, grain sugars, a little bit of graininess, and, and peat. This is char and smoke. This, is, this isn't very briny. It isn't very, um, not very fruity either, but it's, it's definitely really uh, interacted with that on a cask and, and just giving it that, that bracing, smoky, sooty nature to um, a fairly oily, but not a lot of layers, I'll say. I'll try another sip, Sancha. I really chewed around on that and it it just is now even almost tighter. It's almost a little bit of caramel, 
lots of grain and malt sugar, a little bit of char, oak, charcoal, ash. That's about where we're going to play. So this isn't bad. You know, um, I think these are almost always worth taking a chance on, especially you got a friend that's uh, willing to take a chance on you too. Uh, and it's, you know, it's got a nice box. Oh, I wonder if we put the receipt in here. We might have. Oh, no, it didn't. Um, you know, so I'm not, I'm not disappointed. It's nice. It, it doesn't have a lot of richness. It's got a, a good mouthfeel, but it doesn't have a lot of breadth of flavor or richness of flavor. I feel comes off a little harsh. The, the peat isn't really good, chewy, earthy peat. It's more chalky, charcoal, ash, uh, kind of burnt fire peat. The malt's good up front, but it is, it is young malt. That's okay, but it just didn't light me up. Uh, I've had a few sips of this. I guess I got to rate it. Uh, I, again, not disappointed I have it. It's like three and a quarter. It's just, it's actually not all that great for me. Uh, and I'm sorry. Love the presentation. Just not that great. So as I said, you know, I should be shooting against the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. Uh, that would have similar casking, similar age. I think that'd be good. I don't have any. So I do have Lefroy Quarter Cask. And Lefroy Quarter Cask right now in the Edmonton area is on sale for 65 bucks at BSW. A good buy. And it's a classic scotch. You know, it's it's Lefroy. This this is the real Isla Deal. Uh, it's 48%. And it's interesting. Last time I talked about Quarter Cask, uh, a viewer from Germany, love, I please, I love people from Germany chiming in saying, you know what's the law here to say if there's coloring and uh, checking the bottle, there's no declaration that there's McFabrica. So there's no, no coloring in here, which is great because it's rich. In fact, it's significantly richer than this uh, rest and be thankful in terms of the little bit of, you know, bronzed copper going on versus the straw. And, and I'm surprised because this has Oloroso and aside from the quarter cask and that must be where it's pulling the color out of that finishing and quarter cask. Um, this is ex bourbon. It's ex bourbon maturation and then it spends some time in that nice tiny cask. Let's see what 48% Lafroy, also young, possibly that five, six year old. So it's really not that far off. Let's go in on the nose. Uh, richer, more vanillas, more toffees, uh, interplaying with uh, some nice coastal smoke. And true to its name, true to my experience, a little bit of oak tannin comes up even on the on the nose. A bit of, bit of that woodiness. Yeah, let's dive in. Slancha. Okay, I was getting a better nose, but I have to say. The experience I'm trying to share, it's often why I almost always do at least two whiskeys with you because in the moment, it's the contrast that, that just stands out. And this, it's it's like a burst of flavor. It hits the palate and and it lights up. And, and I've got, I've got, you know, sweet and caramel, honey, um, also a bit of lemon citrus, actually interesting. And then it just, it's wrapped in, 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 in oakiness, almost drying woodiness. Uh, I mean, I'm being, uh, that's the contrast. It's not that oaky. Um, and now already in the finish, it's, it's going into that. It w which this had a little bit of, a little bit more. Now we're back in the campfire, a little bit more of those, those, those charred oak, rested oak, peated, smoldered, darker flavors can almost get into a, a really burnt coffee. Like it, 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 I, I spent a bit of time driving truck and, and uh, well, not really truck, like a garbage truck. But anyways, uh, sometimes the coffee had been on when we came back in on a run and it burnt right off almost, but you'd pour it anyways. Sometimes on the very end of, of a heavily peated dram, I can get a bit of that. Now I've done a disservice to quarter cask. You know, quarter cask for me, I don't really need another sip. Is is just a classic, great value, full bracing peat. There's more peat on this than this rest and be thankful. So this is light, it's fun. Uh, I'm glad I had it. It's not the kind of bottle I'm gonna return to. This, like if I want truly bracing, chewing in a campfire, but lots of flavor too, that drying oak, that sweet caramel, like this has all of those flavors at different points. If you're new to peat, 
don't pour this. This will this will this will take you in a place that you may may not be ready for. You know, try some lighter, some little bit of peats. Unless you're going for a deep end and you're like, well, what is this chewing on an ashtray like? It's not an ashtray. This is a sweet charred oak stick. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for joining me here. Uh, I am thankful to be on break. I truly am. You know, winter or not, I do drive safe. My son had a bit of an incident. Uh, he's okay. It's just a traffic uh, incident that involves uh, insurance and figuring out that cars are bloody expensive. Anyways, I do hope that you're okay. I do hope that you have some good uh, scotch in your dram and that you can rest and be thankful. And if you like this more, or have more experiences, why don't you talk to me about this? Because it's a good package. Thanks for joining me. Have a great week.